All right, what's up, everyone? I'm Faloki, and today we're going to be taking a look at my predictions for the Seattle Seahawks in the 2021 NFL season. Will they go 0-17? 17 in a row or somewhere in between? Let's find out. So, you know, just to hop right into this, we all know that the Seahawks have a pretty solid team. We don't really have too many holes in our roster right now. We got a solid pass rush, solid linebackers, solid corners, kind of questionable, but I do believe in them. We got great safeties, an amazing offense just in general with a couple question marks on the offensive line. But overall, the Seahawks are a very good team coming into this NFL season, and I believe they're going to do quite well this year. So let me get my handy dandy Seahawks schedule right up here, and let's just get right into it. So week one, we got the Indian. Indianapolis Colts. Now the Colts are definitely a solid team. They got a good defense. They got a good offense, but they've had some pretty major injuries coming into this season. They have Carson Wentz out for probably the first half of the season, if not more. They have Quentin Nelson, who's going to be out as well. He's on their offensive line, one of the best offensive linemen in the league. So whoever their backup quarterback is, they're going to come in and have less protection. So, you know, they're going to be more susceptible to the pass rush. And as a backup quarterback, probably not going to be playing that well either way. So with extra pass rush coming at you every single play, not going to be too great out there for the backup quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts. But I do believe that the Seahawks are possibly going to have some issues early on in the season with their offense. You know, they're learning a new scheme. They've had some struggles in training camp. They're probably going to figure out a little bit throughout preseason, but it's going to take a little while for them to get going, I believe, and actually get their offense rolling like it was last year early on in the season. I don't think it's going to be like that where we're scoring five touchdowns a game early on in the season. But I do think that we're going to win this game against the Colts because, you know, you lost your starter quarterback. You have a good defense, but still you have to rely on a backup quarterback with one of your major offensive linemen missing. So it's just really not a good situation for the Colts going into week one against the Seahawks, who are definitely going to be a better team when it comes to quarterback. Probably every single place, except for maybe the defense might show up for the Colts a little bit more than our defense shows up. But I do believe that the Seahawks come out week one, Indianapolis Colts, and get a victory 27 to 17, taking them to 1-0 on the season. And now on to week two, we have the Tennessee Titans. Now this one, I'm going to be completely honest. The Titans are looking kind of stacked. They got Julio Jones in the offseason, obviously one of the best wide receivers in the entire NFL. They still have AJ Brown. Ryan Tannehill is a solid quarterback and they have Derrick Henry, who of course you let him get downhill. He's running through about six or seven people before he even gets tackled. So Derrick Henry is already scary enough on his own. Having a passing offense with AJ Brown and Julio Jones is just absolutely terrifying when you look at it from an opposing defense perspective so the titans are going to be an absolute juggernaut on offense their defense wasn't great last year but i believe if their defense does play as bad as they did last year the offense is going to make up for that more often than not so i'm just going to be completely honest i mean the titans have a completely star-studded offense there's really no weaknesses on their offense maybe their defense has a bit of a weakness but with me assuming that the seahawks are going to start off a little bit slow offensively i think the titans just outscore us you know if you focus on derrick henry you're going to get beat by aj brown and Julio Jones. If you focus on the passing game, you're going to get ran over by Derrick Henry. There's really just no winning against the Titans when you're a defense. So I believe the Seahawks take an L. They end up one and one on the season. And I'm going to say that it's going to be 31 to 21, a pretty bad L for the Seattle Seahawks, but a very formidable foe. And now going into week three, we have the Minnesota Vikings. Now the Vikings last year was an absolutely crazy game for the Seahawks. Dalvin Cook got injured and we got absolutely roasted and toasted by their backup running back. It was a pretty low scoring game, but it was definitely a very close game and very interesting game. The Seahawks had about three fourth down conversions on the last drive to win the game with DK Metcalf and Russell Wilson. I mean, it was an absolutely amazing game to watch, but I don't really want it to be that that close you know they have Kirk Cousins and Kirk Cousins isn't really the greatest quarterback ever they do have some really talented offensive players obviously they have Dalvin Cook Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson just to name a few those are like the stars on their team and if Dalvin Cook can stay healthy I mean he is gonna be a very good running back against us if their backup completely torched us imagine what Dalvin Cook could do I believe our defense will be fine though because we have some really good linebackers we have a good defensive line so I believe in us to make those plays and hopefully stop Dalvin Cook a little bit better than we stopped their backup running back last year but still they have a very talented offense they have Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen who can obviously make plays Kirk Cousins no matter how bad he plays you have two great wide receivers you're gonna figure something out their defense was pretty questionable last year and I don't think it really got too much better and I mean last year's game was way too close for comfort the Vikings were one and three going into that game I believe we were undefeated and we just barely beat them that shouldn't be happening against a team like the Vikings and this year I believe the Seahawks are coming in with a lot less holes on their team we have a lot more solid of an offensive line we got more wide 
wide receiver options when we already had a lot of good wide receivers we got tight end options now we still have chris carson russell wilson all that our defense is a lot more solid i believe we have less holes our pass rush is better our linebackers are just as good if not better our corners might be a little bit worse but i believe in them completely our safeties of course very very good so i believe the seattle seahawks will come out get a pretty convincing 35 to 20 win against the minnesota vikings and end up being two and one on the season and that brings us to week four against the san francisco 49ers the first nfc west matchup for the seattle seahawks this one's an interesting one. After an injury riddled 2020, the San Francisco 49ers looked very bad, but of course they have a great team and they're gonna be coming back looking to try and make the Super Bowl again. They have one of the best defenses in the league. Everyone was just hurt last year. That was really the only problem that the 49ers had and they still did better than quite a few teams. The 49ers also have some pretty solid guys when it comes to the offense. And as long as their team can stay healthy, I think they'll be in for a pretty good run this year. But this will definitely be an interesting game to watch because it's a revenge game for both DJ Reed and Akella Witherspoon because we love picking up corners from the 49ers apparently but I mean this is going to be a very interesting game as all 49ers Seahawks games are it's going to be a close game I believe this game will probably be more defense heavy and I completely believe that this depends on who the quarterback is on if the 49ers win or not and the 49ers have been pretty adamant that Jimmy Garoppolo is their starter for some ungodly reason I think Trey Lance would be better more athletic more dynamic and just add more to the offense to make defenses think a little bit more but I mean if they are going to be starting Jimmy G I think this will be a low scoring game more defensive matchup for both teams and I believe the Seahawks will take it because Jimmy G I mean he's good but he's really not dynamic he sits in the pocket he can throw the football I mean good for him I think Trey Lance if he would be starting this game it'd be a lot more interesting but with Jimmy G starting supposedly I'm gonna say 17 to 13 W for the Seattle Seahawks and they move to three and one on the season and now we're on to week five against the LA Rams the Rams made a pretty big move in the offseason trading Jared Goff for Matthew Stafford who is a more veteran talent has more experience and he's probably just better in general to be honest and I think that that's a really good move for them I mean Matthew Stafford he hasn't really had any success in the playoffs but that's more based off of him being on the Lions than really him being a bad quarterback he makes great plays he does really well in games so I think that he's going to do pretty good and after a pretty tough fought game against the 49ers a close you know 17 to 13 barely beat the 49ers the Seahawks only have four days to prepare going into this game the Rams did unfortunately have a big injury to their starting running back Cam Akers he's going to be out for the entire season with an Achilles injury so that really sucks for them but they do have some pretty solid depth at the running back position so I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue for them but I think that the bigger issue is the fact that the Seahawks are coming into this game with only four days of rest after what's probably going to be a very tough game against the 49ers this is kind of a revenge game for Gerald Everett and Shane Waldron they didn't really leave the team on ill will but I do believe that you know any player going against their former team or you know coach against their former team too is probably going to have a little bit more of a want to beat them but unfortunately for those two I think only four days of rest after a really tough game against the 49ers to go against a really tough opponent in the Rams I don't think it's going to work out for the Seahawks too great the Rams are very good defensively and offensively you know they have Jalen Ramsey they have Aaron Donald you can't really compete with those two when it comes to being the best at your position and then now that they have Matthew Stafford I think that they're going to be more consistent on offense than they were with Jared Goff so with that I believe that the Seahawks are going to take an L but I believe it'll be a close game 27 to 24 the Seahawks move to three and two on the season and now for week six against the Steelers this one is going to be pretty interesting you know after two really tough games against the 49ers and the Rams every single game against NFC West opponents is going to be a difficult game the Seahawks are going to have 10 days of rest to get ready for this game against the Steelers the Steelers were a great team last year but they completely fell apart in the last like five or six games and just got completely destroyed by just about everybody I mean they have a really good defense they got Minka Fitzpatrick who is just an interception machine they have a good pass rush with TJ Watt and I mean they have Najee Harris they drafted him he seems like he's good but we haven't really seen him play yet in the Hall of Fame game he didn't do too much and honestly from the Hall of Fame game I'm more worried about Kalen Balazs and whoever their punter is the Steelers punter was just absolutely destroying the Cowboys but overall I mean this is definitely a good team it's a solid defense solid offense will Juju dance on our logo who knows we'll have to wait and see 
Big Ben, I mean, this is probably one of his last few seasons. So he's probably going to come out here looking to win it all. He took a pay cut. He's trying to get other people on the team. He's trying to be more of a team guy. And I mean, he, he seems like he really wants to win it this year. So he's probably going to do pretty well. This is no doubt going to be a really fun game to watch. I think that both offenses are going to have a really great passing game. It's going to be really entertaining, high flying game. Both the offense and the defense for each team are probably going to have some really nice plays throughout this game. But something from last year that the Steelers seemed to struggle with was if their run game got shut down and they had to rely on the pass only even though they are a very good passing offense they seem to struggle when they didn't have their run going so that's something that the Seahawks could try and focus on if you can stop the run while keeping the pass game in check you will be completely fine and probably beat the Steelers because if you can shut down that run, their pass game is going to be hindered. And if you can keep the run shut down without letting them get any big plays on offense through the passing game, I think that the Seahawks can easily win this game and probably get a pretty well-earned win. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game, more offensive than defensive, but the little defense that is played will win the game. I believe the Seahawks are going to take a W. 34 to 27 moving to four and two on the season and now moving on to week seven against the new orleans saints this one's probably the most questionable of them all who's going to be their quarterback you know they lost drew Brees. he retired he's going to go make some bank doing commentating or whatever he's going to do but who's going to be their quarterback they got Taysom hill they got Jameis winston who's going to win the quarterback battle neither one of them are like an amazing quarterback i don't think either one of them will be the answer at quarterback this year maybe if Jameis winston gets the start he plays throughout the year he continues to progress maybe next year he'll be a solid enough quarterback back to be able to lead them somewhere but they do still have a very good defense they have one of the best running backs in the entire league they have a very solid wide receiver in michael thomas i mean they have these guys that can easily make some plays for them even though they do have a question mark at quarterback but i do believe a huge question mark at quarterback like this is going to be a pretty big issue for them of course alvin Kamara could possibly go off and have six touchdowns again and completely destroy us but i believe in our run defense our defensive line linebackers and all that to at least you know stop them and hold them in check as much as you possibly can for one of the best running backs in the entire league but when it comes to the passing offense for the saints there's been a lot of questions around it people don't know if it's going to be good or bad and if it's going to be that questionable i believe the seahawks can win this one relatively easily if they play good enough defense i know the offense will do well for the seahawks at this point week seven i think we'll have our offense going a little bit more the saints are definitely a really good defense but russell wilson chris carson dk metcalf all our good talent on offense can really help us beat some of these better defenses this year so i believe the seahawks will come out and take a w in this game i'm gonna say 28 to 20 i believe the saints defense will do pretty well but their passing offense if it's not gonna get going i don't think that they can win the game so the seahawks get another win on their record moving to five and two on the season and now we're on the week eight against the jacksonville jaguars And with week nine being a bye week, that brings us straight to week 10 against the Green Bay Packers. Now, after a drama filled off season with the whole Aaron Rodgers situation, Devontae Adams wants to get paid, but the Packers don't want to pay him for some reason. It, it's looking pretty bad for the Packers when it comes to the future. But after posting a picture of Jordan and Pimpin, both on their stories, Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers seem like they're going to be trying to run it back, go one more year to try and win a Super Bowl. And Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams, we all know that they're probably some of the best players at their positions so them coming into this league with a chip on their shoulder nothing to lose going one more year trying to win it all not looking good for the rest of the league because you know the Packers they're a solid team they are just generally overall a solid team and if you have Aaron Rodgers playing super upset just he has one goal in mind every single year to win that chip but when he has no chip on his shoulder and he has nothing to lose he's just going to go in there and play his heart out same with Devontae Adams I think they're both going to try and completely ball out this year probably with each other more than everyone else on the team you know I wouldn't be surprised if Devontae Adams gets like 90% of Aaron Rodgers passes overall I think that Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams are going to come out and just completely dominate the league I think they're going to do really well and I mean top tier corners can't even cover Devontae Adams so with our somewhat questionable corners I mean I don't really believe in us too much this game I'm going to be completely honest I think this is going to be kind of a sad loss for the Seattle Seahawks I'm going to say 35 to 24 I think we just get absolutely tombstone pile drivered into the ground by the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers and after that embarrassment in week 10 getting absolutely pounded by the Packers we are moving Moving on to week 11 with the Arizona Cardinals. This will be the first meeting of the Arizona Cardinals and the Seahawks in the 2021 NFL season. And it's halfway through the season. Like this is a late meeting and the second meeting is week 18. So really this one is very important because week 18, there is a chance that both of those teams or one of those teams will be pretty good and making the playoffs. So there's probably a good chance that there'd be some veterans resting in that week 18 game. So this game is the one to win. And the Cardinals, I mean, they're a pretty good team. They were a good team last year. They picked up some veterans. They got 
got AJ Green, JJ Watt. They got some others. They drafted Rondell Moore. He's going to be a nice guy to add to the wide receiver group with DeAndre Hopkins. Of course, Kyler Murray. He's a very quick, he's mobile. He is a versatile quarterback. He is just very good. He can pass. He can run with the best of them. They did lose Kenyon Drake, but to be honest, Chase Edmonds was completely destroying us last year. So I think that that's not really too big of a loss. I think Chase Edmonds is a very good running back. So of course their offense is going to be good. They have a very talented offense. Their defense is also very solid as well. It's going to be a very difficult game for the Seahawks, but I think the Seahawks will pull this one out. After a really bad loss to the Packers, I don't want to see them do what they did last year where they lost to the Bills really bad and then they completely stunk it up the next few games. I want them to take this bad loss to the Packers, move on and play better the next game and take the W 30 to 28. They move on to seven and three in the season. And now for week 12, the Washington football team, uh, to be honest, I don't really think there's too much to talk about here. They got a pretty good defensive line, probably one of the best young defensive lines in the entire NFL, but we took care of them last season when it came to the pass rush. They didn't get any sacks against us. We did well stopping their defensive line and past that, they're a pretty lackluster defense. They got some solid guys, but overall their defense is not great. Offensively, they have Fitz Magic. He's going to be pretty scary to go against. They got scary Terry. And I mean, that's kind of really it. They got Antonio Gibson, he was solid last year, but Fitzmagic, he's a fun guy to watch. I don't think he's going to bring them any crazy amounts of wins. I don't think they're going to be a great team. They're in the NFC East, you know, nothing special, just another NFC East team that's probably going to have a losing record and make the playoffs somehow. I believe the Seahawks take a W in this game, 28 to 17. Pretty good W for the Seahawks, you know, just another NFC East team, what can I say? And that brings us to week 13 against the 49ers, the second game of the season against the 49ers for the Seahawks. This game can, of course, go either way. It's an NFC West matchup. These games are almost always going to be close, and they're almost always going to be entertaining and fun to watch. Any team can win. There's no really clear winners or clear better teams when it comes to the NFC West. So these games are always fun to watch. But for this game, I have a hunch. Now let's say that the 49ers were complete and utter idiots and they actually started Jimmy Garoppolo for the first few weeks like they said they were going to. They said that he was their quarterback this year, which eh, kind of dumb. But let's say that they started him even though they saw that Trey Lance was a very good guy. At this point of the season, week 13, Jimmy Garoppolo has lost his job, all right? Trey Lance has taken the job. Jimmy Garoppolo has probably thrown more interceptions than touchdowns so far. He's relying on the run game and the defense like he always does. And I believe Trey Lance will probably be the starter by this point if Jimmy Garoppolo did get the start early on in the season. So with that, I believe that Trey Lance would bring a more dynamic game to their offense. He'd have a lot more things that the Seahawks would have to worry about when it comes to the 49ers offense. You have the run game. You could do a read option. He could move out of the pocket more than Jimmy Garoppolo could. There's just a lot more threats when someone other than Jimmy Garoppolo is in at quarterback for the 49ers and with the 49ers still having one of the best defenses in the league I think the 49ers would be able to eke out a win in this game in the second game of the season the 49ers find a way to split the season series we take an L 27 to 23 the Seahawks are 8 and 4 still pretty solid on the season and after what would be a pretty sad loss to the 49ers the Seahawks move on to week 14 against the Houston Texans need I say more and after a free win, the Seahawks move on to week 15 against the Los Angeles Rams for their second game of the season. Now, we already understand that the Rams are a good offensive and defensive team. Matthew Stafford is going to be better than Jared Goff. The offense is going to be more consistent because of that. They got some of the best defensive players in the entire league. But still, the Seahawks, I believe, are going to come back and get their revenge after being able to rest more than four days. And they'll have a much easier game before this game because last time they went against the 49ers, had four days. This time they're going against a bunch of college players. And then they're going to come into this game with a normal amount of rest and they're going to be able to beat the Rams. It's still going to be a tough game, no doubt, but I do believe that the Seahawks will take a W in this game. 31 to 27, move to 10 and 4 on the season. And now on to week 16, kind of like the Washington football team. I don't believe there's too much to talk about when it comes to the Bears. I don't think they're really going to be too great this year. Justin Fields is going to be good in the future. I think he'll probably be pretty solid this year, but they still have a lot of holes on the team. They got some good receivers. They got some other good players sprinkled around the team, but overall, the Bears have a lot of holes. They're still not a great team, and I don't think this is the year for them. But in the future, I think that it's looking bright. You know, you got Justin Fields. He's probably Probably going to be a really solid quarterback for a long time. I mean, Darrell Mooney, I believe his name is, he just absolutely cooks everyone and somehow finds a way to get open. And maybe if Justin Field doesn't overthrow him like everyone did last year, they could actually have a pretty decent offense in the future. But I do believe that this is going to be a W for the Seahawks. I think they come in, they win pretty handedly, 28 to 17. The Seahawks move to 11 and 4. The Bears got a good future. This is just not their year. And with that, we move on to week 17. What would be the final game if we weren't in the 2021 NFL season? And we are going against the Lions. Now, they got Jared Goff. 
but they're the Lions. So, I mean, we're, we're going to we're gonna win. I mean, Jared Goff, he wasn't that great on the Rams. And I don't think he's going to be leading the Lions to much success. So, uh, we take the dub. And that takes us to the actual final game of the season. Week 18, the Arizona Cardinals, game two. And I believe this game completely depends on where the rest of the NFC West is. See, the Cardinals are probably going to be a very good team. The Rams are probably going to be a very good team. The 49ers are probably going to be a very good team. And the Seahawks are probably going to be a very good team. So more likely than not, the NFC West is going to have a lot of teams that can probably make the playoffs and are probably going to be playing for playoff contention throughout this time. So if the Seahawks aren't the number one team in the NFC West at 12 and 4, they're probably going to be playing their guys. If they are the second team, maybe, and they don't have a chance to go up or down with a win or a loss, they'll probably be resting some guys. I mean, this game is really just a huge question mark because it depends on where everyone else is. I don't think that the Seahawks are going to win this one either way. I think that they're going to move to 12 and 5 on the season. Either they're going to be resting guys because they're at the top of the NFC West or the Cardinals are just going to beat them because they actually have something to play for and maybe the Seahawks don't have as much to play for. I mean, this is just a game where I feel like the Seahawks are just kind of going to lose their last game of the season, go into the playoffs, not really caring about that last game, focus more on the playoffs than they really do about a week 18 win against the Cardinals. Maybe they will care, maybe they will win, but I'm going to say the Seahawks finish out the season 12 and 5 with their only losses to the Titans, the Packers, and one loss to each NFC West team. And that's going to do it for this video. I think the Seahawks have a pretty good schedule going into this season. They got some easy games, and of course they're in the NFC West, so they got some tough games, but I think this will be a really interesting season to watch. They'll probably have a lot of fun games, a lot of entertaining games, some close games, and overall, I think this is going to be a good season for the Seahawks. Yet another one. We have a very solid team. Russell Wilson coming in with a chip on his shoulder, it looks like. He's got to prove the doubters wrong, come in, try and win MVP. We still got Chris Carson, Rashad Penny, good running backs. We got our wide receivers, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Dwayne Eskridge. We got a lot of depth behind them too. Tight ends, Gerald Everett, Will Disley. Our offensive line is looking a lot better than it has before. Our pass rush, our defensive line is looking solid. Our corners are a bit questionable, but they're young and athletic, so they can make up for any bad plays that they might make with their athleticism. Our safeties, ooh, we got Jamal Landers. We got Quandre Diggs. And boy, oh boy, at linebacker, we still got Bobby Wagner, and we got some young guys around him that are going to continue to grow with him and if he does end up leaving the next few years we got some young guys that are ready to take his spot but that's going to do it for this video like i said let me know down below in the comments what your predictions are for the 2021 nfl season for the seahawks but this is mine 12 and 15 we lose to a couple good teams i don't think we have any bad losses this season and i think that we do pretty well make it to the playoffs and at that point we just got to see what happens but with that i hope you enjoyed the video make sure you leave a like if you did subscribe if you're new and with that i'd like to thank you for watching have a great day.